Genau, Amen.
Hello, room. Good night. Well, at least over here in New York, it's nine. It's almost nine p.m. I see Julie from Garden Gate Cottage in California. Thank you for joining us tonight. We're gonna have, I think, a small little room, which will be great because I'll be able to give you um, a little bit more attention than before that when we have a full room and i have some surprises for you guys for coming in back again into this webinar please um go into the chat and tell me hi there Anne marie how are you and marie where are you from oh tahoe wish it's no just in time for your webinar <laughs> so basically um julie you're you're just um are you snowed in or are you um, able to be out of the snow already? So, um, my ladies, Julie and Anne-Marie. Uh, oh, my, Miami. I have a good friend in Miami there right now. Kitty from Northern California. Hi, Kitty. Kitty. Hey, Susan from Florida. We have a lot of Floridians. I thought I was going to be getting a lot of um, Australians since... I'm starting to change it now. I'm going to be offering two webinars, one earlier in the day and one later at night. Also, you host and live in Virginia. How do you go about doing the remote hosting? Um, I'm going to probably do a webinar about that because you have to make sure that you have a really good property manager and pay them well for that. I'm leaving to Paris this Sunday to speak at the Airbnb Open Conference. I'm teaching a course there. And just managing my house, it's a little bit of like, oh, my God, all the things I have to do. Um, but what about how do you go about talking to your, um, to your staff? I mean, I have electronic the, um, the entire... Um, schedule and who's coming and who's going but hello hello room this is my house in darkness how's everybody do they send you a notification when they come in to clean because I I know of a whole um, on my previous webinar of ask an Airbnb guest my friends had stayed at a Airbnb and the cleaning staff had did not show up and the host did not know this until my friend called the host and was like, hey, the, the place is dirty. And I had spoken to a friend of mine who sometimes cleans for me. And what he does is he does a little video as whenever he finishes and shows me the house and everything that he's done to make sure, like, I approve, um, which I actually like it as a confirmation of, like, someone came in. I could imagine, is it a little bit... Um, Stressful. Hey, oh, thank you. Finally, somebody from uh, <laughs> Suzanne. Hi, from from Australia. I am doing night webinars for you guys, so you guys can attend. Um, I could just imagine, Emery. I I get stressed out, and I'm just leaving for about two weeks. Oh, you have cameras in the building, not the apartment, so we can see the guests come and go. Um, have you had any experience from? Oh, look, another. Hey, Fiona, I'm so glad you made it because <laughs> you're the one that made the comment of like, "Hey, I'm up at four o'clock in the morning," and you see, you speak and I listen, or at least I try to. It's almost nine o'clock. Um, in a couple more minutes, I'm just letting people come into the room. So we can just start our presentation one more time. Um, do you have guests that because you're not home, um, and I'm talking to Anne-Marie who does a remote hosting. Uh, hello, Janet uh, from San Diego. Um, Anne-Marie does remote hosting. She lives in Virginia and she hosts out of Miami. And we're having a conversation of how she manages that because I'm going for two weeks to Europe between the Airbnb Open and I'm going to stay for a few more days over there and it's always very stressful when i go away of like who's cleaning who's coming in especially requests from guests that are like hey i'm landing at seven in the morning and if i'm home i i tend to let them come into the house and check in earlier or at least drop off their bags they take keys and they leave and i'm gonna have a, someone stay at the house a friend of mine is staying at the house but it's still you know i just got an email from a guest saying hey i'm landing at seven and i'm like 
can you come in after nine at least let us sleep late um so i could only imagine doing a remote it, it must be not only constant communication but also do you go and marie do you go there every so often to make sure that everything is up to par and and things like that or how do you go about that So you have, I know you, okay, I'm very flexible with checking in and out if possible. I know. Um, there's a lot of hosts that are very stringent about uh, the check-in and check-out time. And actually, yeah, I imagine you, you have to go at least every six months just to make sure that everything is up to par. I mean, and there's things like whenever I'm, I go and I have a cleaner coming in, when I come back home, there's always things like I'm like, okay, the sheets are not paired correctly and this is not happening and yeah and stacking up oh my god just the sheets and and towels and everything just to make sure that everything is correct um but miami is a nice hot spot to you to have a an airbnb um i was i and i just totally lost my my train of thought because we were talking i check in flexible check in and out i i was looking at um spaces in paris for the airbnb open and we did not stay, we decided not to stay. I'm going with my cousin and we decided not to stay at an Airbnb because he was like, oh, if you come in after six o'clock, we charge you a little more. If you come in after here, you will charge you more. If you breathe too hard, we charge you more. And that's not the way I want a vacation. I don't want to be thinking like, oh no, no, I could only be there from three to five and not from three to 5.30, especially when we only have certain flights that go to Europe. Um, and it means just, spending the time with the bags and things like that so i try to be flexible with my guests as much as i can if um i don't have a check-in late people checking out that day of arrival i do try to give them that so it's 901 and we have a nice small room no, pretty packed for uh wednesday night so let's start the presentation we are talking here about dealing with an airbnb and with a a difficult Airbnb guest and how do we go about turning them around one of the things that I like to tell you guys is I am uh, an Airbnb host this is not Airbnb provided by them they do know about me but not not in any way do they curated this material or know what I'm gonna talk about this is all my opinion and not Airbnb all right so when I when I started Airbnb it was 2010, just to give you a little bit of background, um, and I found out about Airbnb through a New York Times article, and that was when my house Eve Land started. If you don't have a name for your house, I definitely recommend it because I use it in all my communications. I actually have a website for the house. It has a Facebook page. I have postcards. My guidebook has its name. So the client knows the house as Eve Land. It has my my name and at the beginning, but it's it's the house, and like that they have this connection to it. Um, in 2012, I started speaking on behalf of the Sheridan Economy. That's Brian Chesky back there. He's one of the founders of Airbnb. If you didn't know that, I had spoken to. Um, I've been interviewed by the New York Times, NPR, the New Yorker. And I've spoken a couple of times at the state legislators and city council just because I believe in the Sharon economy. You have saved my homes again, again, and again. I totally love Airbnb. I don't agree with everything that they do, but I still believe in the company and I'm still a, 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 about 90% of my bookings come from Airbnb. Um, in 2014, I started the consultation at Evelyn, EvelynBadia.com, which is how you found out about today's webinar. And I really thank you for spending a little bit of time with me. So let's talk, let's get to the topic and we're going to talk about how to get an inquiry. What happens when you get an inquiry from a difficult guest? If it is a difficult one, what happens when you already have them at home? And what happens when you have to review something, somebody that is not ideal customer? Um, because we do get them and um, and we just have to sometimes review them and, and decide what to do with them, okay? I hope everybody can hear me and see me. If um, you have any problems, please just post it on the chat. Let me know that everything is good. So when you get an inquiry, 
sometimes you get something from a newbie and it's an unverified guess and all they say is your space available. And a lot of times us as hosts, we like, oh, I don't want that guest because they're unverified and they didn't read my profile and they didn't read my calendar and why are they actually um, asking me if my space is available when the reality is they don't know. We're teaching them. They're brand new to the site. Um, they really don't know. The site does not really tell them how anything goes in and how things um, happen. So we are here to educate them and to let them know what to do. So one of the things that I do is I actually tell them if my space is available. And I just got a request like that today. And I would say, hey, look, yeah, my space is available for these days, things like that. And I do tell them, by the way, if you're, um, you should get verified because the process takes a little bit of a long time. It has taken some of my guests 24 hours to get verified. They have problems. I have had to contact Airbnb to um, um, help them with the process because sometimes there's problems with it. But once they're verified, they're verified for life and you don't have to do it again. So I do inform them that. And exactly. And almost like I'm already saying, it's like all of our guests have been first timers and you have, they have a learning curve with you. And hopefully you're giving them an experience that after you, you, you raise the bar so high that they're like, oh my God, there's no place like Anne Marie's so or there's no place like Julie. And we know that because you're here today listening to this webinar and you follow me and, and you listen to, to what I have to say. Um, so you're taking a bigger role in hosting that a lot of other hosts do. So this is not a bad guess. So ask them, engage them, ask them, why are you coming to my town? What can I do? Is this your first time here? Give them some clue of how the site works in reference of like, hey, can you tell me a little bit about you? I'd like to know who's coming to my house, how many people, all of this. If you have some specific things about your house, rules that you would like to, to inform them beforehand, because most likely they didn't read your house rules. They didn't read the full description. They're looking at five to ten listings and they all get very confusing which i always say answer within an hour and you get those um bookings quicker all right now but what happens um if we're coming if you get a review an inquiry and it's we're coming for a bachelor party we're quite a nice fellows you play six four maximum but there will be six of us don't worry some could sleep on the floor we're just going to listen to some music and celebrate well this has way too many flags. The, the red flags are just all over the place. And I'm just going to start highlighting them for you. It's like, we're coming for a bachelor party. And it seems to me from the discussion, from this <laughs> conversation, that it's going to be in your house. Um, and, you know, they're saying it's four max, but there will be six of us. Already, they're breaking your house rules. You're not telling them that, yes, you could hold for six or that your space it's available for that many people, six people, it's a lot of people in an apartment if you don't have the appropriate amount of bedrooms for them. And then we're just going to listen to some music and celebrate. And that's a clue of like we're throwing a party. Okay. So say no or communicate a little bit more with them. Um, but I normally will turn this guest down. Um, Yes, Marie is asking that you have to you have to ask about calendars. I do get questions about my calendar all the time. I don't take offense to it because I have been a guest before and I have asked about calendars availability and people are like, oh, no, it's not updated. No, it's not available. And you're like, why is that you don't block your, your calendar? All right. But this guest, this particular guest with all these red flags, please make sure that you turn this person down or direct him somewhere else that might fit their needs better, okay? Um, I had a re-inquiry of this college kids from Harvard and I live in the house. I live in a very residential neighborhood. I don't live in a party town and my house is not a party house. So I had to like really tell them like, well, I live in the house. And they're like, oh no, that's fine. And I'm like, well, you know, this is not a party house. And then they were somewhere else. So it is really important for you to know what your space holds and adhere to those rules, okay? Now, what happens if someone inquires you and says, can I book without Airbnb? Can I book, book outside of the site? Now, that is different than someone, a newbie, asking you, hey, um, 
I have some questions and they'll give you their phone number and it's blocked. What I do with those, because they're newbie and they're probably unverified and they probably don't really know the system, is I tell them, hey, the site blocks any contact information until booking occurs. Let's just communicate through the platform. But if someone asks me, hey, let's book outside of Airbnb, they've been, I, I had an inquiry the other day, they've been a guest, they've been a member since like 2012 with no reviews. And their first thing they did was they hit their phone number in a clever way. So I knew they'd been doing this before. And I met immediately, I flagged them, I stopped them, I contacted Airbnb. That is not the guest you want in your house. You want to make sure that your home is protected, that you have Airbnb um, there to protect you against anything that happens in your house with the guest. The guarantee will not be there if you go outside of the system. Uh, whenever you've had people, whenever you've heard stories about squatters, it tends to be people that went out of the system or they paid for a few days in the system and then they decided to extend their stay and they went outside the system and then they stayed in the apartment forever and it became a nightmare. And then Airbnb says, um, we're not responsible. If they were within our contract and they were within our days and they misbehave, yes, we are responsible for that and they will get involved. If it is outside of the site, they are not responsible. You want that protection. In addition, when someone comes in and asks you to book outside of Airbnb, they are already going to be asking you for more stuff. They're already trouble. They're not going to be satisfied. They're going to want more than what you give them, and they're already trouble. So my recommendation very highly is flag them or say no if you don't want to contact Airbnb, but I normally just flag that that user because that's not who we want on the side. That's not the community we want to build, okay? So now, what happens if you already, um, oh, Viera, you have no idea. I'm so glad that this time is working as well. I actually had some issues this morning. Um, so if you have your guests already at home and they start misbehaving, for example, and this Fiona, this is gonna be for you, they show up with an unwelcome guest, like they pet, they bring a pet, they bring more guests than they said that they were going to be. Um, and you know what you do is you tell them if they show up at your door, you could turn them away. If you have um, people that show up with a pet, or if you have people that show up, let's say your place holds two people. And they do not talk about their two children. And they're like, oh, no, they're going to sleep in the on our bed or something like that. You could say, look, I'm sorry, but my place does not hold that. Because this was not informed through Airbnb, I, am not, I cannot be responsible for liabilities or anything like that. And therefore, I cannot accept you. You should contact Airbnb immediately and just have Airbnb deal with this, okay? So no unwelcome guests, even if you want them. Look how adorable that puppy is. Come on, guys. You know you want that puppy. Now, what happens if your guest decides to have a staycation in your house? And basically, a staycation is someone that does not leave your home. I had a guest like that. She was with me for four days, and she did not leave my backyard. And I was like, why is she here? I work from home, which would then what happened was I was able to, from that experience, I changed my profile and, and I communicate that I only want guests that are discovering the city. I work from home and my preference are people that are out, out and about, okay? So what happens if um, you have space invaders, they take over your kitchen, they take over your space. Um, this just happened to me the other day. I had guests that just totally took over my bathroom and everything else. Thankfully, they were only here for a few days. So I just started, um, I just decided to let it go. And, and I was like, they, they'll be gone in a couple of days, okay? Now, what happens if you have a rule breaker, all right? What you do um, is you communicate. Talk to them and tell them, you know, look, these are the rules of my house. Also communicate through the platform so it's in writing. And so and also Airbnb has a, the communication. If you, have, if you come to any agreement with this guest that has broken any rules or that is not um respecting your home or or uh, being a great guest communicate through the site if you talk to them in person tell them hey i just want to 
confirm our communication and our agreement that you will not be smoking in the house, that you're going to pay extra for the cleaning fee to remove the smoke smell and all this other stuff. So it is written and it is um, known by Airbnb should you need to go that route, okay? So uh, people that ask for discount, Lillian is asking me, what do, do I discuss people that ask for discount? It depends on the season. I've had in January, February, and March in New York, it's very slow season and I, Turn. I give a huge discounts. Okay, so I do. Um, I do give discounts during the high season. I don't, or I tend not to, but I have. Um, I will sometimes tell them, you know, if somebody comes in with a sad story, I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem. I won't charge you for your child, even though they're more disrupted than an adult, um, or things like that. But it really depends on how I feel about it, especially during the high season. I really don't do discounts between april and october that's the high season that's the season for me to make the most money for the slow seasons but um october november and december are weird season it's, it's sort of like this shoulder season people travel during the holidays and look i still have some openings for november so i'm slow i'm lowering my rates just to get it booked okay so communicate with your guests and make sure that you talk to through about it on your plot on the platform and have clear house rules. If you don't have house rules, your guest does not know what is prohibited and what is not, what is allowed and what is not allowed. Okay. So be very clear on your house rules. You do not need to have a novel and you do not need to have like this huge thing of like, you know, if you live a dish or if you do this or if you do that, it doesn't need to be that way. Um, my kitchen stays clean because I keep it clean and that's how the guests see it. So they know they have to maintain it. And if they don't maintain it, I'm, I'll, I'll mention something. I'll either tell them, Hey, look, you know, I'm going to clear the dishwasher so we could pile the dishes in there. Or if you just don't mind doing your dishes and things like that, people, you have to tell them how to treat you. And the beauty with Airbnb and living with guests is especially I found this for myself. I've had to learn how to set boundaries and how to tell people. Okay. So clear house rules is huge. Now what happens if you had that guest that broke the house rule and now you have to review them and we always get those and you, you don't know what to say or you want to say so much because you're so upset about it. My recommendation is to wait 24 hours. Do not ride in the heat of the moment um wait the 24 hours or even a few days to calm down to take a little bit of space go take a yoga class breathe this out it will get better um, excuse me let me drink some water um if you write a review send it to a friend preferably somebody that has a host and get a second opinion they might change some wording they might eliminate some of the emotion that the review might have um for example i, I sometimes people th th people tend to forget how to lock my door i don't know why no matter how many times i say it and for it's usually for especially the first night that i have guests over i go behind them to make sure that they lock the door but if they don't lock it i don't feel like oh you're disrespecting my home or you're doing this personally they're just forgetful. Oh, they probably, that's not something they do in their house. Maybe in their house, the door locks by itself. Here, they have to lock it by hand when they come in and when they leave. And sometimes they just forget. So I just mention it to them again. All right. So get a second opinion and state the facts. Pull the emotional side of it. I know it's really hard. Believe me, I am the worst of the worst. I have gotten personal in some of my <laughs> reviewing of people. Um, I had a guest, and this was way back at the beginning, who had left a bag at the house, and she was visiting some family in the neighborhood in, in Jersey, in another town nearby. So she came by a few days later to pick it up. And she just let me stay the whole day waiting for her. And she was like, well, I thought we were family. Because then I reviewed her. By then, her, she had already checked out, and I reviewed her. And it was like, I was like, she does not respect my time. And, you know, I was so pissed at her because I was sort of like, is this the way you treat family that, that you just don't care about their time? You didn't tell me when you were going to show up. So now, um, how to go about welcoming Clara is asking from now on, I will say that too. I allow a person to book that they not have a photo and they have been a nightmare. I'm still dealing with them. 
almost two months later, or Clara, I'm so sorry about that. I don't, I, I only allow people that are verified. So even with instant book, you have to be verified before you book with me. And uh, for the most part, instant book, I, I only do it in one of my listings. I do not do it in both. In the apartment, um, the space that shares with me, I do not do instant book. I like to have a communication and I don't like surprises of who's coming over. Um, it is a shared space and therefore I like, you know, I, I worry about my safety and I want to make sure that who's coming over in the house that we're going to match well together especially because I work from home in my other listing, even though it's in the same house, it is a private apartment. And that, that one I have is an instant book. Remember with instant books, you go up on the algorithm. So the searches you are up on the, on the platform a little bit earlier. Okay. But that doesn't mean that you have to have instant book on your listing. If it doesn't work for you, do not, do not do it. This, you know, this is your home and this is your listing. And, and believe me, I have issues about Airbnb pushing us for the instant book. And then talking about safety now on the other side, because how can you have safety when you don't know who's coming until you know they book you and, and you don't haven't had any communi communication with them? Okay. So how do you go about welcoming the right guests? Look, besides clear rules and everything else, and you have to know who's coming. Who do you want in your house? And I will teach you how to feel calm when your next guest walks in, how to answer those inquiries, how to go about getting your house rules. And if you come over and pick my brain. I will believe me, I could talk about Airbnb from sheets and towels and everything in between about Airbnb, which is the reason why I started the consultant um, company a year ago, because I really do love this topic. I, I will talk about it with anybody and everybody all about Airbnb. I've convinced lots of friends to get on Airbnb. So what I talk about on the consultation, and it's a one hour consultation where you and I talk all about your listing. And you would give me, I have a little survey beforehand that I asked for some information. I'll go through your listing. I put pictures. I, I do a lot of um, work before our conversation so that our, all we're doing is answering your questions. I mean, just giving you some feedback from how to maximize your price, how to go the best photos and your captions. If you don't have captions in your photos, please use them. They're a great way for you to provide some information that the guests can see right away. All right. Um, I will talk to you about headlines and names of your listings. I will also talk about house rules. Having a house rules that says, please treat my home like it's yours is not a house rule. If they smoke in their house, if they bring people over at night, that means they're treating their ho your house like theirs. So it's not the best thing. Um, and also I will talk about much more. One of the things that I actually talk about and I share on the consultation is that well, right now I have a 10% offer, whoever books between today and tomorrow, and you have a 10% off. But one of the things that I also give out is my guidebook template. This is something that my guests review, talk about on their reviews all the time. If you go through my Airbnb reviews, you will you will you could read what my guests speak about my guidebook i have spent years um creating this guidebook and curating and i keep changing and it keeps evolving and one of the things i want to do is i share it with you so if you hire me for the consultation you get the template so all you have to do is fill it out um and you know do i get you have a prompt document to guide you of what to include on in your guidebook so you're not there by yourself and you're like well what do i put in what don't i put in and i i have a complete prompt documents with questions with what to do um and everything like that and then you have the template um that shows you what um the, the actual guidebook and how to fill it out all right so now what i mean you get the guidebook you get an hour with me and all that for 85 dollars an hour so you know please come in come and talk to me um and if you only want the guidebook because you're like ah i don't want to talk to you Evelyn, not yet i'm not there yet it's just 20 dollars. this is the first time that i'm offering it it's a special price for you guys I, the price will go up once I um, I do it, it about a month. I'm going to keep it at this price for right now, and especially for you because you've been hanging out with me for so long. Um, you could get it as a Google document, as a PowerPoint, or as a um, keynote. 
that's how I do it. I have it as a Google document and it's my preference because I have it, um, I could print it anywhere. I could email it to guests. Excuse me, I, um, I work a lot on Google Docs as you well know. So it's only $20 and it's, you get all of this information, it's all been done for you. And all you have to do is fill it out. You fill out your, you know, your Wi-Fi code, your address, and I have all of the questions for you not to even think about it. Everything is there for you. So um, now let's let's go to some questions. Um, and let's uh, whoops, my my okay. We're gonna go to some yes, thank you that I named the Eve Lad. It became I have a company that's also called Eve Bad, so I'm not really that original. I just keep using my name for almost everything. All right, so I know that some of you I've spoken about your listing before, and this is the part that you love and I love. I love looking at your listing and give you some actionable comments right away. So if you give me your Airbnb listing right now, I'm going to just do three. That's it. Just the first three people. If we, I've talked to you about your listing before, let's give a chance to everybody else. Because this afternoon, this uh, this morning, I had someone and I was like, I think I've seen this listing before. And she was like, yes, you have. So Fiona, of course, <laughs> come on in. And Fiona, I hope I haven't talked to you um, from before. So let's, let me just... I'm gonna share your screen, Fiona. Oh, I love you, please. I actually wanna go out of Australia. I'm hoping that um, Airbnb, let me just, hold on one second, let me do this, and oops, share the screen. I hope Airbnb's next uh, well, present, uh, conference is going to be out there. All right, so you've seen the, Fiona's beautiful apartment. I'm loving the, gra the color, great color palette. Um, Fiona, do you do you have a designer, um, or was it you that that designed it all? Because it's really pretty. I love the the color template that you have on your first photo. For spacious, comfortable, five minutes to city. Now, um, you this is a big space. You you could fit eight guests in one of five bedrooms and five beds. All right, let's let's look at it. Um, so this is your second picture. Your first picture is. Sending me here. Hold on one second. All right. So this is your. You have seventy-two photos. That's a lot. I'm. I'm just going to tell you right now. That's a lot of photos. So let's go through for a few of them. Um, beautiful space again. I love the bedroom. Really nice. Well done. Well done. In reference of you have your night tables, nice colors. You're using your captions well. You're saying that um, the king size bed. So it's all there. Now you have the outdoor for the pool, and I understand why you want to do that in the beautiful kitchen. Um, okay, very functional, very pretty. I wish you had a little bit of color in there. Like you see how you have a mat here that gives you color and breaks it. things. Um, now how many, oh, so, okay, so you have a dog and you have her in the, so this is room three three, which is very similar to the second room in reference of the bed. Okay, so it's the same room. You just broke the photos. Okay, so I'm looking at the same room. All right, and we're back to the outside, and now we're back to the inside. Okay, and we're back here, and then this is room number two. You know, one of the things that I recommend for you, Fiona, is um, a floor plan. You might need a floor plan of your house because there's so many rooms, there's so much space. How many bathrooms does he have? Um, and look, we already visited these images. You have a lot of repeat images. 18, you had it as the number one. So, I mean, with 72 images, it's a lot, and you repeat in a lot of them, and they're not in order. So what happens is it could be very confusing for your guest, okay? Now, um, with so many people, I hope you have more than one bathroom. Uh, ooh, one bathroom, okay. It's gonna be tight. Relax on a window and wine in our spacious five bedroom Queenslander home with a huge pool and colorful tropical gown. Welcome basket awaits you. Okay, let's, um, let's see if we could do something a little bit. So my first thing is, now take down a couple of your photos. You have way too many. Um, I'm up to put photo 28. 
this photo of the outside of your house should be one of your first photos, one of the five. A lot of photos of the beautiful flowers. Everything is really pretty, um, but you're not providing new information. Um, and people can get very overwhelmed. Um, they really want to see about 20 photos or so by 30 the most because you have three bedrooms apartment um i love it i am so sorry that somebody's calling me hold on one second and i'm sorry about this um i'm gonna i'm sorry about that guys um i am the the i'm sorry i'm going to go back to this okay so you have one bathroom you have five bedrooms you accommodate eight people which is a lot you have good check in check out i like it that you wrote here three things our guests love our, uh, about our space i imagine you took that from chip conley's webinar that we did here uh which was the, this is a great stuff about you telling your guests information about your home in a friendly manner so this is great. You're doing really, really good. Why pay three hundred dollars more? Okay. Um, and I don't know. Do you need to say that it's upstairs from you? Do people complain about that? Let's see your reviews. You have. Oh, this is surprising that they're doing this now. Um, this is the first time I'm seeing this, Fiona. About the four point five, um, from thirty two reviews. Um. So you have some great reviews. Um, and I like it that you answer them again. So like that, it, it shows how responsible you are and things like that. Um, and great to rule. Thank you so much for making our time since. Um, I hear that the presentation froze. Is that so? So Mike Greco is narrow down your photos um this is a class act i love that um recommend this delightful decorated accommodation this is great words that you could use within your description um so oh you muted i muted myself no i'm not muted i'm sorry it seems like uh my dearest pat is telling me please let me know that you can hear me Yeah, I, Fiona, I understand that a lot of our Kims, but what happens is you are trying to, you have way too many photos and you have, remember that the first five, this first five are really important, the first six, because the first one is your top header and then you have the other five that are here. Um, I think the bathroom is not a great photo to show. I think showing the front of the house was a pretty photo and that could be number two. I like that you show the pool and maybe have a little bit um a, a, um, a close-up shot of the pool. I understand that you're showing the dog, but if the dog is not part of the of the house, I mean, would they would the dog be with the guests in the patio? Then I could understand. Um, then I could understand why you're featuring your doggy. But yeah, that's that's my recommendation. Too many photos. You're doing really well. Um, you have you could pull out some information from your reviews, and use them into your description and about this listing, so that it's talk. Give them the words that they want to hear, and what they want to hear, they're going to tell you in the reviews. They they will use the language that is really great to use on about this, especially on about this listings, and on the description. All right. But great, great space, Fiona. I hope to stay there when I go to Australia, which is one of my, it's on my bucket list to go. All right. Okay. So the next one, um, Pat, which one is the next one? You have, um, let me see. I'm brand new. Halls, so happy and same with everyone. I know, Marie, a lot of people do not keep up. Okay. So I have Fiona, then it's Anna Marie, and again, Thank you for allowing me to give you some feedback, uh, very short, actionable feedback. This is one of my favorite things to do. Um, all right. Okay, your first photo is blurry. 
not the best. So I'm going to say changing, not the great photo. It's, it's not the best photo, um, Anna-Marie, so change it. Um, I like, this could be your first photo. I wish the windows were open. Again, you have a blurry photo here. Take your photos again, even if it's with your um, smartphone or something, or get Airbnb to take your photos so that you have, I mean, if you have this photo number three, in a better quality, that could be your first photo. Um, and then you go in and outside, and then you fully equip kitchen, full bathroom. Okay, and I'm trying to figure out how why 17 photos for all right, all right, I got it. So, first photo, not the best photo. Look, it's blurry. Um, it's not really telling me about anything about the apartment or anything like that. So I, I, my recommendation is change this photo. What's not to love about South Beach? Just head out the door and within minutes you can be on the beach and, or in the hottest land. The restaurants are plenty for studio apartment has everything you need. For. Okay, so let's talk about, about this listing and let's see if we could pull some better information. Look, in this listing, it doesn't have that four and a half um, reviews. And Marie, I know you're doing the remote listing and but your cleanliness is four and a half stars. You need to talk to your cleaning people because that should not be the case. Um, you have a small space, and it should be just spotless all the time. Um, they left beach towels. Okay, so look, this is great that you leave everything. You could say on your list, and just bring your bathing suit. We have everything else for you, from beach towels to um, beach chairs and everything that you need to spend your day at the beach. And the beach is how far? So this is something that you could totally say on here on your listing on about this listing. This is, that's a gem of information that you're not telling. Okay. So guys, I'm 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 actually going to just talk to one more listing just to let you know. Um. So. So I'm gonna say please um, rewrite this about this listing. So that it has more information and pertinent information about your lovely studio. It's a great studio. It's really pretty and everything else. I think you have a little bit too many photos of the outside world, but that's just me. Um, and this review from Alexandra, it's excellent. You have great, great stuff th there that you could use. A minute from the beach. How how close is it? How what's the walking distance? You know, wake up and roll onto the beach. So. I'm going to say go there, um, you know, and, and, and make it a little bit more about how accessible it is and how great, um, so, and great location in South Beach is not really telling me anything. You know, it could be walk to the beach um, and restaurants or something like that where it's just really telling you change. And Maria, I want that first photo change, all right? Let me know when you change it. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk to somebody else. So let's close this one. That was for Anne Marie. And she does, she gave the link. Julie. Okay, Julie, where's your link? Hold on one second. I'm, I'm looking. She did not give the link. Julie, if you don't give me the link, I don't know how to look for you. Um, Um, all right. I'm sorry if Julie stating that she was, the f um, she was trying to get me into her listing. <laughs> all right. Okay. I found you and I'm, I know there's a lot of, okay, here we go. Okay. Julie, let me see how to find you here. Um, this is not you're not giving me the list in my love um okay you're saying here it is where it is love oh no that's not it that's not um pad it's it's working the and julie you're not giving me the raw the correct url i'm gonna try to do this one more time but please people you know um make it easy for me you want me to look at your listing you need to um, make this a little bit easier. Let me just see how I can make this 
happen. Um, oh, I don't know if this is it. Nope, I, I'm sorry, I cannot find you. Um, Julie, I'm so sorry, I, I need you to give me the URL. So if you send it to me uh, on my email, I'll, I'll respond to you directly um, and just for you. Everybody else, if you want me to review your listing and give you feedback, it is very cost effective, $95. You will make that money immediately, believe me. All right, so, um, Anne Marie, let's go to Stephen and Stephanie's room. Okay, second story suite. Okay, let's find out what does that mean. Interesting photo, your first one, uh, pretty couch. Um, unfortunately, the let me just share it with the with the screen. I did, I didn't do this last time. I was talking about a listing and I didn't I forgot to share the screen and I was told about that. All right, so present to everybody. Here we go. So we are looking at Stephanie and Steven, who are super hosts. Look at that. With 10 reviews already, super hosts. Congratulations. Not that any guest knows what a super host is. All right, but but we do. We care. All right. So this is the living room, coach, uh, couch, afternoon light. Um, autumn. I wish that the the photo behind the in, the foliage behind the couch was not that color. I wish you had a photo with some greenery and things like that, because it does not look as lively and as beautiful as it must be in the summer, right? Um, okay, you're showing me sustainable design. The little TV suite as a piece of art, but it also works. All in perfect condition. Okay, I hope you have a bigger TV as well, besides that little TV. Um, you're showing me some stuff, and I want to see the house. You're showing me books. I want to see the house. Remember, what I want to see is the house. The, the the books and things like that. Um, like this photo number twelve is too late. You need to bring this up earlier. Okay. Okay. This is beautiful. This should be your first photo, number 13. All right, I hope you're taking notes. But remember, guys, this is a replay. There'll be a replay of this, and if you're, if I'm reviewing your listing, you could go back and listen to it. All right, this is a great photo, especially that is um, the views from your room. So this, is, this could be like up ahead. Um, you have 33 images, and a lot of them are just, you're repeating this image, this image, this is, you already told me about the little TV and this is the same image you use. Um, I would like a fuller, this, okay, you're repeating some images, you don't need to do that. Okay, that beautiful foliage is great. Um, but you have a lot of repeats. I don't know the dynamics. So, okay, so the couch opens up. Look at that. Uh, or, oh no, there's an air bed in front of it. All right, let's look at this. In North Adams, we're five minutes walk from Massachusetts and Mocha with porch views of town and the Mohawk. 30 minutes, non smoking, rest best for two or three people. We're coming to two more on an air bed in the living room. Homie, air bright. Okay. Um, my reco is you could eliminate some of the photos. I'm wondering why you got four and a half stars on accuracy. What is going on that, that they're saying? Quite spacious, supplied, and lovely breakfast food. It is as described as you know, we're attentive. So quiet and spacious could be on your title. Uh, I had a feeling we enjoy, but we love this so much once we arrive. Um, I'm just trying to read a little bit. Quaint and spacious with lots of lights. So basically your title could be light and spacious um, two bedroom or you know the second story suite does not tell me anything um, you have some amazing words from your reviews that you could use in your description and in your listing name remember the listing name is really important and second room second story suite does not really tell me also it would be great at the stairs let me know that show me that um, I'm not seeing the front of the house, so you're saying second story suite, so it's above your apartment. So that means, you know, is there a front of the house or anything like that? It would be great an image of that because you have a lot of repetitive images that you could get rid of. Okay. 
All right. Um, oh, so our other listen is called The Garden Suite. I totally understand. Um, and in this book all the time, that's why we call it that. I got it. Uh, but you could call it something else. You could call it, you know, the a Garden Suite, it's it's a good name because you are already saying that it's garden. Um, and But this, you, you have some other names. And Second Story Suite doesn't really give it, unless it has a name that's appropriate, light, airy, um, beautiful, spacious, anything like that. Um, that will hook your people in. Imagine, you know, where you want to stay and how you call your house. It's really important. That's how. That's the first thing that the person read. And I think this first image is not doing justice to your to your house, and only because of the foliage behind it. I wish he had um, some other thing, but I think that other photo that I mentioned, I think, is. Um, image like this one, number 13, could be your first photo. And this is, you know, views from your bedroom, even if it's from the little room, you're not lying. Okay. So that's it for today. Um, Julie, I'm sorry that I was not able to. Oh, yeah, no, I'm still. Did you? I don't know why you're giving me love. Um, this is not the correct listing. You're giving me the management of your listing, and it's whenever I click on it, it doesn't give me a URL. All right. So please, um, Julie, contact me. Go to um, Evelyn at EvelynBadia.com, and and I will just talk to you just because I know that that you you've been trying. You've been trying. Uh, basically, your URLs will say Airbnb.com um, slash rooms and then slash a number. That's the URL, and that's important because you are going to be giving that out to people that ask you, hey, so can I stay at your Airbnb? Can I see your listing? Um, and a lot of times, Airbnb, it's really hard to find your space. Believe me, I put down my address in my space, and I still cannot find it. I have to. I have a website. I have a Facebook group. I have a Facebook page. I have postcards, and that's the reason why my house has a name, all right? So just to let you know. Um, please know that I would love to work with you. It is really, really my pleasure to be of service to talk to you host um julie don't worry don't be sorry about it we will get it straight out i will talk to you off the off the webinar um that was green until last week i didn't want to put images of grooming i totally understand but what happened steven and stephanie is just that um the image is not the best because you have that brown behind it so if you have an image um if you have an image that has a greenery in the back, just have it. Or if you have something with snow because the snow is coming, I totally get it that the leaves are no longer green. <laughs> I get it. So then change the change the image to something else that's a, a little bit more appealing. That's all. Okay, so you already updated the photo in the description. Anne Marie, thank you. Let me just go and check you out for a minute before we say goodnight because it's it's getting late here and this is my second webinar of the day. Um, no, I still have I still have your first photo, man. I it's 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 not telling me that. Um, oh, Danielle is asking me if I'm going to the Airbnb open. I'm not only going to the open; I'm actually speaking at the open. I am going to have this amazing presentation that I've been working really, really hard on it. I've worked for many. Um, weeks on it and hire our directors and hire um everything else and it's a great uh, presentation it's about reviews and i've done a little bit of the work here with you guys where i show you how do you pull information from your reviews but i'm going to be showing some other information not just how to pull data from your review for your listing name and for your listing description but how to utilize it in different things and i'm not actually thinking of doing that webinar in november Unless I do a webinar about a review of Paris and get a couple of the host educators that are going to be teaching in Paris. It depends on what you want, whether you want my webinar to be just about my talk or do you want one where we, a couple of different host educators speak and, and give the highlights of their um, stuff. Danielle, I'll be in Paris on the 11th. I will, I'm actually going to land in Paris on the 9th. And I'll be speaking on the 12th and the 13th at 5.45 in the afternoon. So please come over. I will be there. I'm trying to set up a meetup so we can all get together, hopefully before. But there's so many things happening. Please, if you see me, just say hi to me. You've seen my face many a times. Um, 
and you know just come on over I love taking photos with people that that have listened to me yes Fiona I'm hoping that next year I my bet is that next year is going to be somewhere in Asia I think it's going to be the um I think it's going to be Singapore. That's what I keep saying. Uh, <laughs> Danielle, thank you. Please do come for my talk. I'm actually, I even created postcards because I was like, oh my God, who's going to stay on to like 5.45 phone call um, f uh, conversation because I'm so late in the afternoon and I know people will be, will be tired. But Danielle, come on over. And if you bring me your listing, I'm actually going to do a live demonstration of um, people's listings. So come and talk to me and tell me, Evelyn. I talked to you at the webinar. All right. Um, again, thank you so much for staying with me, for coming back again tonight one more time. I'm going to be doing double webinars from now on. So my dearest Australians. Oh, look, Julie, you did it. Um, I know, I know. I'm hoping that... Uh, <laughs> I'm hoping that things are happening. Oh, Julie, okay, I'm gonna do this very quick for Julie since she so worked so hard at this and she finally got it out. Now you know how to pull out your listing. All right, let me just share her listing for a minute. All right, let's do this quickly because it's 9.50 and I'm tired. Um, all right, so this is not a bad photo. It's an interesting room because the bed is in the middle of the kitchen. Okay, I'm a little confused. Let me continue seeing. I love this photo. I would love this photo as number one. This is very cute, but I'm confused. Okay, so Okay, I'm trying to Oh, so the bed is in the it's in a studio apartment. And the bed is really in the middle. Interesting choice. Um, I don't know if I would want that to be the first photo, but I totally understand it. Because you want people's expectations. Um, oh, I love chickens. I want chickens so badly. You have no idea. Uh, oh, I love this photo too. This is so pretty. This is great. You have some, okay. Your first photo, I'm understanding it, but I don't know if I want it to be the first one. Um, oh, man. I know you work with the space. I, I probably will want a floor plan, and there is some free floor plans that will provide some information. Um, yeah, because it's, it's a... Let me just see what your reviews say. I mean, you have excellent reviews. You have five stars, my love. So you're doing something right. The Pleasant on Clutter and Festive Garden Gate Cottage near. So you have a name, Garden Gate Cottage. That's a great thing. And I hope you have a little Facebook page and, and all of that. And you have postcards. I love giving out postcards to people so that people show off this place. Uh, the Queen Platform Bed, come, come to, there is also Sofa Sleeper and Chase Sleeper. Okay, I am not understanding how many people could sleep in two guests, no bedroom. So it's a studio apartment. All right, was it? We arrived late. Um, Julie made sure we had no problem signing in. It was what bus the circular was signing in. Special someone is the word done. Welcome message at the entrance of the cottage with your name, rare fresh fruit. Uh, that would be great if you have, like, like that would be a great little image um, that shows how you made people feel special. Everything we needed by far the most efficient use of space I've seen when you stay at the car carne. Okay. Uh, start. Look, you got like more than six starts. This is great. Oh, the fire pit. All right. Okay. Let me let me look at your photos a little bit more because I think you're not giving them, you're not doing justice. Um, I will show the fire pit. Where is the fire pit? I'm not seeing the fire pit. Julie, where's the fire pit? Yes, use this outside photo. Use this um, photo number two as your first photo, please. This needs to be your first photo. And I love that you have corn growing. Um, my squirrels ate my corn. Um, is this the view? Is photo number three view from your house? Um, if it's not, um, 
I love the little garden. Okay. I want to see that fire pit that they talk about. I want to see that, and I'm not seeing it. And I'm not seeing it as one of your photos. Look, your first six photos, like if I told you guys this before, are really huge. So you have this beautiful little cottage, which is your photo number two. That should be your photo number one. Then you photo here number seven of the of a closet. That's not really doing anything. It doesn't say anything to me. It's just a closet. Um, I'm not going to rent your space because of a closet. So you could totally, I understand. Um, it was a great experience. And you're not saying this? No, darling. You need to say all of this. So um, let me see where are the chickens, 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 chickens. Um, don't send me chickens. Like, um, okay, so you mention it here. I think the chickens are such a draw. I think they should be going first. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I think only because about because I love um also the mount is the view from your house. Okay, so you need to say that because what it feels like is sort of a let me see here. Garden gate cottage shamery. So what you should say here, this is your view. So because I would not know, I would think it's just a view from the town. Okay. Um Sleeps comfortably with the basic your first photo. Yeah, so I'm gonna say uh, yes, use the first photo, change it to something else just because it's 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 not I know you're being honest about your space and I appreciate that, but you could use that photo a little bit later, okay? Um and show a photo of the of the space opened up, but I don't know if I would want that. Um because you only want two people there and you want it to be just cozy and for them to um to be there we'll take um are there anything that you guests don't like about your space because you could do um what the previous host did that is sort of a what your list is say three things your guests love about my space and two things they don't this is from a chip conley webinar that we did a few months ago chip conley is the head, airbnb head of hospitality and he gave a great speak um great conversation that we had you can look on my site for his webinar um, and I actually did some highlights about it. Um, but yeah, you could do that where it's sort of like three things my guests love and two things they don't love. So like that, it's a little clearer. And um, the description is a little bit hard to read because there's so many paragraphs. You could just um, divide it a little bit better. One of the things I recommend is sort of like if you're going to sp speak about the space, you divide that. If you're going to speak about the town, you divide that. So it's, it's just easier on the eye. Okay. Um, you have a beautiful place, so you won't be able to stream it, but you can gain online access. I'm glad that you say that. You see, immediately here, that's very important. Great job, Julie, on saying that. Yeah, of course they're going to love the the fresh eggs. Say that on the front. Show those chickens, man. Those chickens are a unique selling point, man, It's even if it's just for me. But, but show those chickens, okay? All right, so that is all for tonight. We are going to end the night with chickens, man. Guys, chickens. I want chickens, man. Chickens grow in Brooklyn. That's that's what I want in my backyard. But um, my friends are like, chickens are dirty, and I want chickens. I don't care. All right. Thank you again. We stay for a whole hour. So thank you so much, everybody, for coming here. Please contact me. Um, if nothing else, go get the guidebook. My God, guys, it's, I've spent so much time and energy on creating that amazing guidebook just for you and for you to just have ease on creating this, all right? So thank you so much. And again, I'll see you. I'm going to see you in a few weeks because it, it's November. This is supposed to be the October webinar, and I'm going to be doing a, a webinar soon um, in a couple of weeks, all right? Have a great night, and thank you, everybody.